Hey East View family, it's Josh again here. I hope you've been enjoying diving into the book of John as much as I have over the last few weeks. I was actually preaching at our Bloomington campus on this passage in John where Jesus calls his first disciples. And um, in my sermon, I looked at the five interactions he had with different people in that passage and the questions he was asking them and the things he was speaking to their hearts in that moment. And today I wanna to dive a little bit deeper into the story of Nathaniel. He's the last interaction we see in John chapter one. His friend Philip had ran up to him and told him, hey, I think we found Jesus, the Messiah. I think we finally found this guy. And Nathaniel responds to him with that, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And, and uh, Philip wisely decides not to argue with him. And instead, it just brings him to experience Jesus. And so we get this really interesting interaction between Jesus and Nathaniel. Uh, where uh, Jesus first says, behold, an Israelite indeed in whom there is no deceit. Now, if you look at that, it might be hard to understand what Jesus is saying here, but it's likely from some scholars a bit of like play on words, sarcasm, teasing from Jesus here. Because if you know anything about Israel, it's a, they are descendants from Abraham, but also from his um, descendant Jacob, who was later renamed Israel. And if you know anything about Jacob, he was a known liar and deceiver of people. And so for Jesus to say, it's an Israelite of no deceit, he's like, well, you're, you're a descendant of Israel, but you don't have that deceptive nature within you. So he's kind of teasing him a little bit here. And Nathaniel's like, how do you know me? And Jesus then says to him, before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. And I just want to sit with that statement this morning. Maybe you don't always feel like God sees you where you're at. Maybe you're not sure what he's up to in doing today. But Jesus, through a supernatural experience with the Father, because of Jesus' full dependence, he's both fully God and fully human, but everything he does, the miracles and the signs he does are through the Father. And so his full dependence on the Father, he was able to have this ability to know where Nathaniel was before that. And he spoke to Nathaniel and he was telling Nathaniel through this that God sees him. And that, that, that blew Nathaniel's mind to think that this man, the son of God, had known where he was. He had that knowledge of him. But then Jesus turns it even further and says, you think that's amazing? Wait until you see what's to come. Jesus is likely referring to his miracle of turning water to wine here in the next chapter of John. But again, there's also a deeper meaning here. That if you think it's amazing that God sees you and that he knows what you're doing and that he knows every intimate and personal detail about you, the more amazing miracle is that he wants to restore you through that. And he's been able to do that through his death and resurrection. And now the miracle of resurrection is available to you and to me today. That is a much greater thing to come and so Nathaniel is being invited into that experience that day. And you and I are invited into that today as well. We can sit and we can marvel at the amazing miracles that Jesus does on this earth and has done in scriptures, and that's great. But if we miss the miracle of resurrection, if we miss the truth that Jesus wants to create a new creation within you and I, then we miss the whole point of why he came. And so my encouragement to you this week, especially if you have your journals, the processor, what is it that you're looking for? What is it that you might need to let go of so that Jesus can be Lord of your life and so that you can experience resurrected life today and experience that eternal life for the rest of eternity? What a great gift. What a greater thing to come that we have access to through Jesus. I hope you dwell on that question this week. Um, and continue to dive into John 1 as there's so much rich stuff here that John has written. Love you, church.